this, we will be having a panel discussion and I expect everyone to participate and ask your questions because I know we are persons, we don't know everything and we all have questions that we really want to ask. And, you know, as we are looking at our theme, honoring God through our lifestyle, I pray that tonight will be a very informative. We have a set of panelists who are, you know, children of God, true children of God, and they're real persons. So I pray that, you know, we will not be shy tonight, but we will definitely interact with them and have them answering our questions that we have. God bless you as we go head on into our praise and worship, which will be led by Brother Ricardo Campbell, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessings and honor, glory and power be unto God. Hallelujah. Brother Ricardo? Seems like he got kicked off. Anyway, let us let us begin our praise and worship. Praise God. Here we are in your presence, lifting holy hands to you. Here we are, praising Jesus for all the things he's brought us through. Here we are, in your presence. Lifting holy hands to you, oh Lord, here we are, praising Jesus for all the things he's brought us through, oh here we are in your presence lifting holy hands to you here we are praising jesus for all the things he's brought us through. Brother Ricardo, are you back? Brother Ricardo, are you back? Okay, we just continue. Praise God. We just lift our hands in the in wherever we are, praise God. Could just lift our hands and just give the Lord a worthy worship. Just give him a wave offering. He's awesome in this place. He's awesome tonight. Hallelujah. We glorify the Lord. We give him all the honor and all the praise that is due unto him. Praise God. He is God and God alone. Thank you, Jesus. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your ways. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your ways, I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. For when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely, yes. My soul says yes. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart unto the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely, yes. My soul says yes. I love you. I love you from the bottom of my heart unto the depths of my soul. I love you. I really do. My soul loves you. Oh, everybody sing, I love you. Lord, I love you. From the bottom of my heart unto the depths of my soul, I love you. I really do, my soul loves you. Could we all just unmute our mics and just start shouting some praises to the Lord right now, right now where you are? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Could we yes. shout some Hallelujah. praises? Hallelujah, God is worthy, he's worthy. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. He's awesome, yes, yes, yes. Shout some praises to him. Oh, God, you're worthy of all the praise. God, we glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, he's worthy, he's worthy. Tell the Lord something sweet tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Love upon the Lord just a little bit more. God is an awesome God, God is worthy. To be praised. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. You may mute back your mic as we sing the last song. You can tell the world about him. You can tell the nations. Hallelujah. You can tell the world about this. You can tell the nations about that. Tell them Jesus has come. Tell them that the comforter has come. For he brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. Yes, you can tell the world about this. You can tell the nations about that. Tell them Jesus has come. Tell them that the comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. You can tell the world about this. You can tell the nations about that. Tell them Jesus has come. Tell them that the comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. Oh, you can tell the world about this. You can tell the nations about that. Tell them Jesus has come. Tell them that the comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is worthy. God is excellent. We lift him up. We glorify his name. He alone is worthy to be praised. And tonight, as we welcome, let us put our hands together as we welcome, praise God, missionary Allison. Praise God. Allison Johnson, who is going to be our moderator in the name of Jesus. Sister Allison, are you here? Bless the Lord Jesus. Praise Bless the God. Lord. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We continue to give God thanks tonight. Bless the name of Jesus. 
He is worthy to be praised, and we just continue to glorify him. We continue to honor him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He brings joy to my soul. Bless the name of Jesus tonight. Truly grateful, hallelujah, to be in the presence of the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. to the host. Bless the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. Greetings to everyone tonight. Bless the Lord. We continue to worship the Lord Jesus. As we sing this song, Great is the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Great is the Lord, the Prince of life and glory. Great is the Lord, and wonderful his name. Shout, shout again the soul redeeming story. Mercy for all through him proclaim. Great is the Lord, great is the Lord. Hail him, hail him, sound his name afar. He is the light that shineth in the darkness. He is the bright and morning star. Wake every heart, let every voice adore him. Now let the world with hallelujahs ring. Scepters and crowns in dust shall fall before him. Jesus alone shall reign, our King. Great is the Lord, great is the Lord. Hail him, hail him, sound his name afar. He is the light that shineth in the darkness. He is the bright and morning star. Great is the Lord, great is the Lord. Hail him, hail him, sound his name afar. He is the light that shineth in the darkness, and he is the bright and morning star. He is the light that shineth in the darkness. He is the bright and a morning star. He is the light that shineth in the darkness. He is the bright and a morning star. Hallelujah, we thank you tonight, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The song says he is the light that shineth in the darkness. He is the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. Surely tonight, God is great. He's awesome. He has been doing wonderful things. Bless the Lord Jesus. And we continue to glorify him. Bless the Lord. We're just expecting a wonderful tonight. Wonderful night tonight. We continue to give the Lord praise. We continue to give him the honor that is due unto his name. Bless the Lord Jesus. At this time, we'll move into the scripture reading, bless the Lord, which will be from Psalm 119, bless the Lord, and we'll read from verses 1 to 9, that's Psalm 119 from verse 1 to 9, and it reads thus, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. All that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I, ha I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes Oh, forsake me not utterly, ninth and last. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Thank you, Jesus. We praise the name of Jesus tonight. 
Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Even at this time, as we are going into prayer, praise the name of Jesus. We are just going to just let our hearts be at the place. Bless the Lord. We just want to give God what is due unto him tonight. We just want to give him our best. We just want to be open. We just want to be receptive to what God is doing tonight. Truly, he has been doing great things and he continues to be wonderful. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. At this time, I'll ask Brother Martel to open in prayer. Bless the Lord. Brother Martel, over to you at this time. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, saints. Bless the Lord, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Let Hallelujah. us bow our heads as I pray in Jesus' name. Most holy, most righteous, and eternal God. Lord, we thank you, O Lord God Almighty, for your mercy, your love, for being compassionate towards us. Lord Jesus, we know, O God Almighty, that for such a time as this, you have prepared, O God, this technology that we may reach to persons both near and far. Lord, we honor you tonight because we know that you are worthy to be praised from the uprising of the sun unto the going down of the same. We lift up your name, O God Almighty. Lord Jesus, we ask that you will just purge us of all sin and unrighteousness. As we will listen, O God, and apply your words to our hearts this night, O God Almighty, we ask that self will be utterly slain that whatever the enemy has planted, it will be canceled now in the name of Jesus. We ask that which the presenters will be speaking on the topic, that it will be with clarity, it will be structured, it will be according to your will, Lord, and your divine power. Lord God, we come against the unstableness of the internet. Whatever the enemy has orchestrated now, we bind it now and send it to the pit of hell. Lord Jesus, we ask that the participants of this Zoom platform, they will be bold enough to ask the questions that are troubling their life. Oh God, a life that we want to please you more. So we with all shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to the words of God. Lord, let whatever we have learned on this platform, let us apply to our lives, oh God Almighty that it will bring us closer to you, O oh God Almighty, in a time as this. Let us learn, let us feast upon the word and apply it. Let us use the experience of other, that we may glorify you and only you because you deserve all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Lord, we just lift up your name one more time and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Martel, for having prayed for us. Bless the name of Jesus. I will just continue to worship the Lord. Bless the Lord Jesus. There is this one other song that we'll sing before I hand over. It says, I'm not sorry I answered the master's call. Hallelujah. You can just join and sing with me. Bless the Lord. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry, I answer the master's call. For Jesus took my heavy load, now I'm on the glory road. I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry at all. I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry, I answered the master's call. Oh, Jesus took my heavy load, now I'm on the glory road. I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry at all. Oh, I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry, I answer the master's call. For Jesus took my heavy load, now I'm on the glory road. I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The song says, I'm not sorry I answered the master's call. Bless the name of Jesus. And we're just going to worship the Lord tonight as our topic says, honoring God through our lifestyle. Bless the Lord Jesus. We know the life that we have chosen to live when we answer the master's call. And we are determined to hold out to the end. Let us not let anything prevent us, though the road is rough, though the road is rocky. We continue to honor the Lord. We continue to give him our best. And we continue to strive to worship him in spirit and in truth. Bless the name of Jesus. At this time, I take pleasure in handing over to our National Youth President, Missionary Loy Perry. May the Lord continue to bless you tonight. Missionary Perry, over to you. Bless God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Missionary Allison, for taking us thus far. Praise God. We thank you and we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. And, you know, we don't know what happened to Brother Ricardo, but nevertheless, we thank him for um, what had started a little bit, but then, you know, he got kicked off. But nevertheless, tonight we are here together and I want to bless the heart of everyone that came this afternoon there's still more persons that are coming we want to tell the lord thank you for you for always supporting us week after week and it has been an awesome time praise god god is just a good god we just want to greet everyone here on zoom want to greet everyone on facebook and we pray that we will worship the lord together and that we will listen and that we will learn and we will ask questions as well tonight as tonight we will be having a discussion honoring God through our lifestyle. And as you can see, we have three able individuals to take us, to lead us in this our discussion tonight. And at this time, I'm just going to welcome the moderator for this session, Elder Kavon Walker in the name of Jesus, to take us further into this service. God bless you tonight. Elder Kavon. Thank you very much, Missionary Perry. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, everyone. Amen. Let me greet everyone that is on uh, joining us tonight. Praise God. Greetings to our own president, Missionary Lloyd Perry. Amen. And all the exec members of the National Youth Department. Praise God. Let me also greet our bishop and evangelist, Nepal. Praise God. Greetings to all the church leaders and officers who, are, who have joined us tonight. Those who are tuned into Zoom, those who are tuned into Facebook, whichever platform you are, let me greet you all. Amen. All God's wonderful children. Praise God. Greetings to you all in the precious name of Jesus. So tonight we're going to be looking on a very interesting topic, one that is absolutely relevant for our times, praise God, honoring God through our lifestyle. And as Missionary Perry mentioned, we have three members of the panel for the discussion tonight, praise God, amen, three qualified and anointed panelists, praise God, anointed for this season, amen, and they are here for such a time as this to walk us through this topic of honoring God through our lifestyle. So let me just introduce the panelists who we have tonight. So first, we have evangelist Denise Fogo. So Denise Fogo is an ordained evangelist of the Holiness Born Again Church of Jesus Christ Apostolic West Green. She is the wife of Lethe and Fogo, and they have two lovely children, Lehana and Nathaniel. Evangelist Fogo serves in her local assembly as a Sunday school teacher, and she is also a member of the board of that assembly. She has also served in both the National Women's Department and the National Youth Department. For a secular calling, she is Evangelist Fogo Fogo working as an administrator at the port of Montego Bay. We have heard her on several occasions and have been truly blessed by her ministry and are looking forward to hearing her views tonight. So let me welcome Evangelist Fogo. Praise God. We also have Sister Glenis Allen. 
So Glenis Joy Allen, a woman of purpose, hails from the Praise Temple Pentecostal Church in Falmouth under the leadership of Overseer Ezekiel Clark. She was raised in the church and has been serving the Lord for 35 years. She's a Sunday school teacher and has served as a choir director for 20 years. She's a lover of souls, passionate about her Christianity and has always availed herself to offer support to the young people. She has been happily married to Minister Wayne Allen for 23 years. Their union has produced three beautiful children. She is a guidance counselor by profession for 10 years and 22 years overall as a teacher. She's an eloquent motiva motivational speaker and always gives of her best when she's asked to execute a task. We are excited to be blessed by the presence of Sister Glenis Allen with us and we welcome you, Sister Allen. And finally, but by no means least, we have Elder Ransford Stewart. So Ransford Stewart was born and raised in an apostolic family. He was baptized at the tender age of nine, making him 36 years old in Christ. He received the gift of the Holy Ghost at 11. He has been an ordained elder in the Holiness Born Again Church for just over 10 years and is a marriage officer for almost two years. Ella Stewart has one son. He obtained a bachelor's degree in theology from IUBS in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth. Ella Stewart loves the Lord and has a passion for ministry and serving in the kingdom. Ella Stewart has been an ardent supporter of the youth department and has always made himself available to minister to the youth. We are privileged to have John in on our panel tonight, Elder Ransford Stewart. God bless you and welcome Elder Stewart. Praise God. So do we have Elder Stewart, Sister Glennis, and Evangelist Fogo? Blessings, blessings. Blessings. Good to be here. Thank you much God for this. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Sister Allen? Yes. I'm okay. here. Okay. Welcome, you. welcome to you all. Yeah. God bless you. Praise God. Thank Amen. You. We're looking Amen. forward to the discussion tonight. Amen. Um, we will be setting the pace with a few questions. I know that persons who are tuning in may also have um, questions of their own. So we're looking on the theme tonight, honoring God through our lifestyle. So we first want to set the pace by understanding what it is that we're discussing. And so we want to start out by looking on what does it mean to honor God? I'm first going to ask uh, Evangelist Fogo to start us off by looking at what it means to honor God. Evangelist Fogo. I'm sorry. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Okay. Praise the Lord. I want to greet you all tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Greetings to our national youth president, Sister Loy Perry. And um, I, I'm not sure if I'm understanding that the bishop is on tonight. Are they? Is he? No, I'm not sure if they're on as yet, but I greet Oh, okay, them. because I yeah. heard you greeting them. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes. But I just want to greet all God's people to our moderator, to, my, um, to the fellow panelists. Um, and to, well, if there are any other ministers here tonight and to our young people, I want to greet you all tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Um, I count it an honor to be asked to sit on this panel. And you know, the fact that I have been coming from where some of you currently are, as a matter of fact, you know, every now and again, I have to pinch myself because personally, when I was a young person growing up, I did not know that I would have, I thought that the Lord would have come before I got to be 40. Um, <laughs> I will not tell you how much more than 40 I am. <laughs> That's your guess. <laughs> but um, I think from that perspective, I, you know, I have the authority to speak to us tonight and to speak to our young people. 
And, you know, before I even touch on our topic, I just want to say to you young people that you can make it. I want you to know tonight that irrespective of the challenges, irrespective of the times that are changing, irrespective of what is happening there out in the world today, I mean, we are bombarded by all kinds of things. And I can understand tonight that, you know, your where you are now is much harder, I think, than where I, where I was at that stage as a young person, a teenager, even in my early 20s. The world is a global community. And um, it was not as open then as it is now. And so the internet and the fact that we are even on this platform, some of you are joining by Facebook Live. Um, the fact that you know we are able to communicate in this manner speaks volumes to where we have gone, technological advancements have gone. Um, 20 years ago, this was not possible. Um, a cell phone probably was a luxury. Today we have, we have, you know, smartphones. We're able to see what is happening in other countries. We don't have to, as a matter of fact, we're even able to shop, you know, internationally sitting right in the comfort of our bedrooms or wherever it is that we, we want to be. So, and so, so many things are opened um, to us and to you young persons. And as I said before, I want to be honest and I want you to know tonight that we know that it is harder for you than it was for us then. And, but I wanted to encourage you tonight that irrespective of where you are, irrespective of the changing times, that God remains true and faithful. And if you are committed to him, I'm sure that he's going to see you through. Now, the script, we, our, our topic tonight speaks to honoring God through our lifestyle. Um, I look at the scripture tonight in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and it says to us that, you are a chosen generation, a royal priest to the holy nation, and we are called to show forth the praises of him who has brought us out of darkness into marvelous light. Um, the, the world has a view, and the church also has its views. We are guided by the word of God. And, you know, funny enough, somebody asked me a question the other day, and the professor said to me, I want you to be real. And when I thought about it, I... You know, I said to myself, what do they really mean by being real? And so sometimes persons, and, and I'm, I'm understanding, and my understanding is this, that persons do not want us to go to the word of God. But this is our guide. The word of the Lord is our guide. And if we do not believe that the word of God is God's word to us, that it is God speaking to us, then we are going to be having an issue. It is God's word that directs us. It is his word that tells us, that gives us direction. It shows us where to do, where to go, how we ought to live and how we ought to operate. Now, our topic says to us honor, that we are to honor God through. To honor means to show respect. It means to, um, it means to greatly esteem. It means the quality of knowing and doing what is morally right to honor, um, to regard with great respect. And as the people of God, we honor our lifestyle. Lifestyle is just the way of life. That is, it's just how we live. Now, our, our lifestyle is gonna be shaped either by one view or the other. It is either going to be the, by the word of God or it is going to be by what the world dictates. And as I said before, if we believe that the word of God is our guide, and if, it, if we believe that the word of God is real and true, then we are going to ensure that what we do is in line with what the word of God says. So basically it is just showing respect. It's just living a life that is guided by the word of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Evangelist. Praise God. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Allen to also share in um, on that question. What does it mean to honor God? Amen. Bless the Lord, everyone. Let me say thanks for the invitation. Really humble to be a part of this platform. I must say that we are not the reservoir of knowledge and information, but we are here to share with each other 
and to learn and to grow in the kingdom of God. Now, the topic is a lovely one, honoring God through our lifestyle. Undoubtedly, honoring God through our lifestyle should be the goal and the aim for every child of God. And I say it's against the background that as children of God, we have to imitate, imitate God because he's a perfect example for us. And as was said before, the word honor means to show respect and regard and reverence. So to honor God with our lifestyle, for me, it means to worship him with our attitudes, our affections and our actions. And this cannot be limited to just going to church in normal rituals, but it means outside of church. When somebody sees us, it is reflecting Christ. It is also staying connected to him in prayer, in reading the word of God, and not only reading the word of God, but applying the word of God to our daily life. It is also worship. It is also serving others and also sharing the gospel, be a witness to someone else. Because when we come to know Christ, it is not for ourselves, but we have to be replica of the gospel so other persons can also come and know him for ourselves and also to fulfill our God-given purpose. So tonight, honoring God in our lifestyle, Person might ask, what kind of lifestyle are we are talking about? What is a lifestyle for a Christian? But as was said before, it is our everyday life. It's just the way of life. There are certain things that as children of God, when we get saved, we don't get indulging. As the, uh, my sister just said a while ago, the word of God is the blueprint and it teaches, it guides us how we are supposed to live. All right. So that's my take on it so far. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. So from our first uh, two panelists, we understand that uh, honor, when we speak about honoring God, we are looking basically at respecting God. Praise God. We're looking at having a regard, um, reverend, praise God, um, to stay connected in worship. Um, and so, yeah, that is wonderful. Lifestyle, looking at the way we live. Um, I would want you no know, Elder Stewart to chime in on the lifestyle. When we speak about lifestyle, so we want to just, first of all, break down the, 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 the topic um, before we go into other questions. So when we speak about lifestyle, Elder Stewart, yeah, what are we speaking on? Greetings, everyone. Lord bless you all. And I want to thank you for the invite to be on this platform. I want to greet to our National Youth President, Missionary Perry, and to Elder Walk, our moderator, to all the national exec members, and just to everybody who's on this platform, and by extension on Facebook, we greet you in Jesus' name. And so very thankful to God for having given us this privilege to be able to share with the saints, and by extension, the wider cross-section of persons on this particular topic. As has been said, a very powerful topic and very relevant as well, because we are living in a day and time that questions everything. And so, as has been raised, the issue of um, what honor means, and we have already gone through that, we look at lifestyle. And lifestyle basically refers to the entire spectrum of one's life. It is how you live your life, every single aspect of it. There is nothing that is left out. So, of course, we are looking at your dress code, your different habits in terms of what you listen to, the persons you hang out with, where you go, who you have as your friends slash associates, who are the persons in your space. It covers, like I said, just the entire spectrum. So there is no particular area that is left out and for the child of God has already been established by the two previous panelists that the word of God is our blueprint. So our lifestyle should be governed and shaped by the word of God. And if that is not the case, then we have to retool and reshape. But certainly our lifestyles, and there's no particular area. I want to say this. There's no particular area for our lifestyle that is exempt 
from the word of God. So anything that we do, anything that we are going to be indulging in, there is a particular scripture or text that would speak to that. And so we have to be very careful and cognizant of what we get into because that will determine how persons view us and by extension, our lifestyles will also impact on others. So it's very important as we look at the issue of lifestyle that we understand that I can do nothing and say, okay, that's just my own personal business because every part of me is going to be under scrutiny as it relates to the word of God. Okay, Amen. thanks. Yeah, thanks very much, Ella. Um, Ella, you, you mentioned that all areas of our life, uh, all areas are covered by scripture. Some persons would be of the view, of the opinion that given the modern times we live in, you know, yeah. um, and the challenges we are faced with, no, you know, we are faced with things that the Bible doesn't speak to, the Bible um, doesn't make reference to. Um, but yet still you are saying to us tonight that the scripture covers all areas of, the, of, of, of our lives. Um, could you tell us some more about that? Basically, there is not much that is new in terms of how persons live their life. I know we have advances in technology and other things, but certainly the entire scope of, of humanity is covered. And therefore, even if it's not a even if, even if that um, particular area is not directly spoken to, but there is a scripture that would be either indirectly speaking to it or it can be used to shape how I, for example, let's say, let's take out the friends I keep. Obviously, there are scriptures that would speak clear to that. What your associations, who you, I can tell you plain and straight that if you hang out with certain persons, then automatically you're going to become like them. Bible says that evil communication corrupt good manners. Well, I can choose my friends, you know, and persons will say that. So to say that there's no particular area that is going to be covered would be saying indirectly well that the Lord wouldn't have had an in advance known that would have had situations that would arise. And even if the scripture is not speaking directly to that particular situation, but there may be something that is indirectly pointing to it that we have to read into from the word of God to understand how we ought to live our lifestyles accordingly. Okay, thank you, Elder. So Evangelist Fogo and Sister Allen would have also made mention of that point, the fact that the word is our blueprint. And yes. uh, young, young people must understand you know, the importance of the word and the fact that we should be consulting it um, for everything we do. Uh, Sister Allen, in your professional life, you, as a guidance counselor, um, from that vantage point, could you share with us some of the challenges that the youth may face today in their quest um, to honor God? Okay. Uh, as a guidance counselor and a, a teacher, teaching, I've been teaching teenagers. That's, I've been teaching teenagers over 20 years now. So I am able to talk with them, observe certain things about them and know some of the challenges that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. There are many, but I'm just going to identify a few that might be on the forefront of most of the teenagers' mind. Uh, youths are faced with like peer pressure, right? Negativity from the social media, uh, they are faced with also the values, the type of values that is presented by whether from the homes that they are coming from or the society at large. And it might, it might be conflicting to the mores and the values that we, we, are, we are brought up in, especially from the word of God. So those are some of the main ones I know that um, teenagers or young people are only really facing in terms of peer pressure. So persons will want to influence them to do negativity. But for me, I would normally say to them that, remember, we were young just like you are now. And we were faced with peer pressure then. And as my sister said before, some of the things that you are being faced now, it is even 
where you say no, even more because of what is happening now. But the truth is still spelled peer pressure, same way. So I normally say to the young people, when the persons are influenced to do the negativity things, the stuff that are not right, why don't you flip the script on them? Why don't you pressure them about the good things as well? Don't allow them alone to, to drown you out, drown out the positivity. So I will always say to young people, if somebody's influenced to do the wrong and you know what is right, you influence them to do the right thing. Flip the script on them when you come on to peer pressure. I know it's not easy, but I have been there and that's what I had to do. And it boils down also, as young people, you have to be intentional. Let me say that, be intentional. Because what I used to guide myself while I'm growing up, I don't want to blame anybody for the choices that I make. I have to be accountable for my decisions. So be intentional, know yourself and know what you are about when persons are pressuring you to do the wrong stuff. That is peer pressure. In terms of the social media, you know, I remember one sister said that, elderly person said that, Social media, computer is of the devil. Hmm. I smile and I said, well, a lot of things we can say is of the devil. But what the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for good. So look at the platform today, Zoom. I'm not sure the person who came up with this platform had in mind us tonight. But what are we doing? We are using this platform for what? The glory and the honor of God. So young people, when they come onto social media, the Facebook, whatever you are on, use it to glorify God. Use it so you can enhance your walk with God. You know, flip the script. Uh, the last one, value system. Even now, more than before, as my sister said before, the values and the morals of society is just degraded, just going down, it's just going down. And it would seem as if the more we try to talk to our young people to walk that road is the more the noise, the negativity is so low that you want to drown out the things that they should know. But I'm saying to the young people today, you have to have a, a relationship with God for yourself. And it does not come overnight. It is a it is, it's gradual because as a Christian today, I am still learning more about God because who on this platform know everything about God? None of us. We are still learning. So I'm saying to the young people, you have to develop a relationship with God. Know God for yourself. Don't let others impress their value system on you when you know what is right. So I will just stop right there for now. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Sister Allen. So flip the script and don't let them pressure you, you pressure them. Amen, Flipping. wonderful. Yes. Uh, so Sister Evangelist Pogo, Sister Allen would have covered uh, or mentioned a number of things um, that are challenges that the youth face today. Is there anything that you would like to add? <laughs> Evangelist Pogo? All right, I'm there. <laughs> All right, so one of the things, what you mentioned, peer pressure, which is a fact. Um, mm -hmm. Fear is one of the things as well that would cause young people to, and, and, and it is born also out of um, peer pressure. Um, you want to be a part of the in crowd. You don't want to be the one to be, seen, to be seen as the one that is different. So you want to belong. But as she mentioned earlier that, you know, we have to be resolute, we have to be intentional. And I still go back to knowing who you are in Christ. Um, you probably will say, you know, as, 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 a, as, a, as, a, as a young child, I mean, how, what can I know and how can I know? And one of the questions that I hear a lot of persons asking, how do I know if I am in the will of God? The will of God is the word of God. And so if you do not have an intimate relationship with the word of God, then you are not going to, you're not going to know yourself. You're not going to know who God says that you are. Um, you know, and sometimes we sing the songs and um, I am 
I am a child friend of God and, and, and but really are we? And so it is through the word of God that we really develop our identity. And so when it comes to, when it comes to fear of being sidelined or not becoming a part of the in-group or, you know, you, you, you want to succumb to peer pressure because the, there's a picture that is painted that if you're not doing this, if, if, if you're not, if you're not seen with this crowd, then you're not, you're not anybody. And sometimes they'll even want to tell you, but you have to be resolute in your mind. You, one of the things when, even the color of your skin, we know today that a culture has developed where if you're not a browning, then you are not, you're, you're not in. And I can remember even as a young person growing up, um, I did not know that I was beautiful. I did not know that I was a pretty person. I started wearing glasses from, I was maybe about eight years old. I started wearing glasses. And of course, the adv well, where we were um, then technologically did not help me any, any, any bit. My glasses were thick. And when I say thick, because I, the doctors will tell you that I'm clinically blind. So if I take off my glasses now, I'm not even able to see to the other corner of my room. That is how bad my eyesight are. If I'm reading, my book has to be up in my face. And so th that was a challenge for me when I was, when I was growing up. Um, and, you know, as I said before, I mentioned, so I had these thick glasses and I heard, you would hear, and I was, and I'm, I was, and I'm still dark skinned, but then I get to appreciate that I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. When I started having children and when my daughter was born, she was dark skinned, as dark as I am. And so I had to, from an early age, because I, coming from a background from where I was coming, thick glasses, dry head, um, dark skin, I, I, I came up and my parents were not the parents to say, and probably it's out of ignorance as well, to say that you're beautiful or whatever. So I didn't know, not until I was a young girl. And I remember I had some friends who were in church and one day one of the guys looked at me, nothing um, sexual, nothing. And he said to me, you know that you're a pretty girl? And I had to look at him, really? I mean, this was the first time I was hearing that. And I said, really? And I, I went home and I had to go and look in the mirror and really look at what, and can I tell you, I would stand in front of that mirror and I would look at myself and I would look to see where the beauty was. Now, of course, we know that beauty is superficial. Beauty is only, a, real beauty comes from within. But as I said before, I did not know how I was physically. And so it was after time that I began to appreciate myself. So I knew that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. I was not going to bleach after I started coming into my own. I was not going to bleach my skin. Of course, there was a period of time when I, um, I explored um, contact lenses. And so I would take off these heavy things off my face and so forth and so on. So fear, as I said before, of not belonging. And of course I was ostracized. I was not, as I said before, when even in high school, I was not the pretty, I was not what the guys were going for. I, I, no, I was not seen in that light. And so, of course, you'd want to, you know, want to belong and you would want to, you, you, you'd want to be a part of an in crowd. But then from very early, I knew, and if my mother told me nothing else, she said, what you have to do is to make sure that you get a good education. And so I saw from even in grade seven at high school, girls who were flashy, and girls who, it was known that they had boyfriends who were drug dealers and they were not happy. I mean, of course they came and they had all the monies, they had all the latest this and da 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 da. But guess what happened? After a while you found that some of them dropped out of high school because they became pregnant. And I had purposed in my mind that I was not going to make the mistakes that they made. So yes, you, you, you're driven by fear because you want to belong, but you have to know who you are and to stand resolute that, that I don't have to be a part of that crowd to be somebody. I am who God says I am. And I know that through the word of God. 
Praise God. That is absolutely awesome, um, Evangelist Fogo. Thank you for that. You know, one of the things is that sometimes uh, we may just look on the youth and we don't even understand the, 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 the magnitude of the issues that they are facing. Um, and somebody like you now coming and sharing the experience, I definitely know that someone has taken something from that, you know, real powerful. And so I want to thank you for that. Um, and we, this session is just absolutely great. Um, we are off to a wonderful start. And so there are so many things that were said there that we can take away, praise God. Um, uh, and I just hope that persons who are listening will know who they are, praise God. Learn to know your identity in Christ, not as the world sees you, but as God sees you, as you mentioned, Evangelist Fogo. So thanks very much for that. Um, so we have just looked on some of the issues that our youth are facing, right? Um, so Elder Stewart, what yes, I sir. want to look on right now is what does this lifestyle that is honoring God look like? What are we talking about when we say lifestyle that honors God? What does this look like? Okay. All right. So I have listened to both panelists and they have really a very good job so far in outlining some of the areas that we have looked at. The lifestyle pleasing to God is rooted first and foremostly in the word of God. And that has to be the substratum, the foundational principle on which any person builds their life. The word of God is your compass, your director, your everything. And therefore, it is going to be that whatever you do and say is going to be in accordance with the word of God. So let's take, for example, as we looked at dress. Modesty, of course, is highlighted from the word of God. So I would not dress in a way that would be inappropriate, that would be revealing, that would not cause an offense to individuals, but rather I would dress myself appropriately according to the word of God so that my life style in that particular era depicts that of a child of God. And like I said before, it covers the entire spectrum. So it speaks to modesty and moderation in my dress, also in my speech. So how I talk also will depict the lives of a child of God. So I cannot talk like most other young persons talk. I have to be different. And we have many slangs and many different terms that are used today by persons in the world. And sometimes you have to wonder, our young persons sometimes, sadly, get these same terms and begin to use them. And you're wondering, but you're not supposed to be a child of God. Why are you using these terminologies? So you have to inculcate into your speech, into your dress code. In other words, you dare to be different according to the word of God, you live your life. So if other persons are involved in immoral acts or illicit acts, whether at school or at work or anywhere else, you are not going to be involved in that because your lifestyle must depict the child of God. So when they come in and they start talking certain arguments, it's like, hello, I won't be a part of that because I am a child of God and I'm not too concerned about how you feel about me because I am not trying to make you be okay with me, but rather I am more concerned that my lifestyle is in accordance with the word of God. So I will live, I will walk, I will talk, I will dress in accordance with the word because that is what the child of God has to use as his or her source of direction and by extension, my behavioral patterns will be shaped by the word of God. And sometimes persons become very disturbed because they would want to adapt what other persons are doing and how they behave, how they dress. I want to cut my hair like that. I want to dress like this. I want to talk like this. The music that they're listening to, I want to listen to that kind of music. But the question, of course, becomes, is it wholesome for a child of God? And therefore, that is where your challenge is going to be. 
if it's not wholesome, if it's not becoming of a child of God, then you have to ask yourself the question, is it going to be beneficial and purposeful as a child of God? And so you're going to now have to retool, reshape, rethink, and look at what you're doing and saying, because if it's not in accordance with God's word, it's going to be out of the word and they're going to cause serious problems for you. So it has to be that your lifestyle is pleasing to God because it is rooted and grounded in his word. Okay, thank you very much, Elder. So looking at this lifestyle that pleases God, um, it, it should be rooted in the word of God. And you, you mentioned about the, the actions, the dress, the speech. Um, Evangelist St. Paul has this thing that she always speaks of called ads, action, yeah. your dress, your speech. So okay. whatever it is that um, you're doing in any of those areas uh, yes. should be pleasing to God. Uh, Sister Allen, we have seen a lot of advances in technology. We have seen cultures coming together you know, it's no longer just about Jamaica, little Jamaica, but we are, we have received exposure to other cultures, um, ways of doing things have evolved over the years. So the question is, can the youth living in 2020 still be expected to honor God, given all that has happened? And why is it necessary for the youth to still be honoring God um, in, the, in this day? Okay, uh, very compact question. Uh, yes, times are changing, things are evolving, and we all know with culture and all of that. But as Elder just mentioned a while ago, not just with culture, but let us zero in with the church. We have rules that we govern us. And I remember at work when someone asked, how I am not involved in certain things, or I don't do certain things. And if what they are doing or how they dress me that they're not a child of God, that's a very good question. Because we cannot judge persons to say because they might have processed hair or whatever, they are not saved. Culture, rules. So for me, I am careful how I respond to a question like that. So I will let them know that even though you have different culture and have whatever, we still have rules. We have leaders who set the path for us. And from once you take membership in a church, you also agree to abide by the rules because everywhere you go, you have rules. In the ministry, they will set out a big guideline, but when it boils down, the school have their specific rules. So even though culture is different and others are doing other stuff, young people can still live a life to honor God because the truth is, is it the dress that is honoring God? Is it the hair? Or is it the life? Is it reflecting Christ? Is that when I speak, whatever I do, am I making an impression on somebody's soul? That is the essence of it, you know, and we can't, and we can't miss that. Are we impacting somebody? When you leave their presence, are they saying, oh my God, I, 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 feel, I, I feel like I want to serve God. You, you left something on them. That is what I would encourage young people to focus on. Now, Elder mentioned about the conversation. Now, in this culture and what is happening now, the conversation, oh my God, they, they are various. They hear some stuff. But the truth is, when you indulge in certain conversation with unsafe friends, and when you are through and something come up, trust me, they are going to look at you different and say, ah, remember the other day when we were talking about such as, you might not remember, but they remember because guess what? Let me tell you something. Do not misinterpret and say they have expectations and they know what the church should do. They know what the people of God should be doing. So let us not kid ourselves. They know how we should live. No wonder they will criticize us and say we are hypocrites. So I would say to our young people, be careful. And as I said, be intentional. I cannot overemphasize. Be intentional, right? Know God for yourself because at the end of the day is one soul you have. I said in church, if you had two, you could take a chance, but it's only one. So we can't play around because culture and what is happening around us and get distracted. We have to 
you know, keep our eyes on the Lord and also make sure our walk is in accordance with the word of God. Because trust me, it is the blueprint. When you're out of line, it shows us that we are out of line. So I would say to the young people, yes, things are there and persons are doing other stuff because of their culture or their whatever, but don't be distracted by that. The essence of it is that ensure that the life that you are living, it is a life pleasing to God. Um, and Elder, may I just add something to what um, Sister Joyce, the, um, Joyce said? Yes. I think that, and I was saying it on Sunday in church, that um, I have a serious problem with the body of Christ today because along with what you said, Sister Joy, there also needs to be personal convictions. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that, sadly today, many of us have anything that we stand for. And has been said very often by persons, if you don't stand for anything, you will fall for everything. There, there has to be personal mm -hmm. convictions. You tell the persons, listen to me, this is my line. I am drawing this line and I don't care how you feel about me. I'm not trying to be dogmatic. I'm not trying to force anything on you, but this is my stance and please respect my stance. I don't do this. I don't wear this. I don't dress this way. You have a problem with it? I'm saying I'm not forcing it on you or trying to make you feel like, well, if you see things the way I see it, but certainly there have to be personal convictions. If there are no personal convictions, we're going to have serious challenges. And the body of Christ today needs to have young persons, older persons, middle-aged persons who have personal convictions. I am standing for this. Like Dan and his friends went down to Babylon, strange place. Hello, I don't eat certain kind of meat. I'm in a strange land that's being offered to me and my life is at stake, but I just tell a plane, I don't eat this. We're gonna fight with me, kill, oh, kill me if you want to kill me. But certainly this is my stance. And so there has to be a place where we tell people, listen to me now, I am not trying to force, like I said, anything on you, but I'm just telling you what it's worth. This is my personal conviction and I'm gonna stand and live by it. Praise God. Thank you very much, Elder. Wonderful. Amen. Um, so, and thanks also, Sister Allen. So despite the changes in time, praise God, despite the advance, advances that have taken place, uh, even the merger of culture, we still are expected to live a life of holiness and, and uh, to have our lives honoring God. So Elder Stewart kind of started to touch on some of the things that we, we, uh, um, I would want to be addressed in the next question. But I'll ask Evangelist Fogo to give us her views on this. So, in most, most settings outside of the church that an apostolic youth will find himself or herself, they may be in the minority. So if it is that that person is in a classroom, you will find that as a, as a believer, as a saved child of God, um, that person will be in the minority. Probably in the general school population, they are gonna be in the minority. If you, if you take the person's community that that person lives in, chances are that individual is gonna be in the minority. So Evangelist Fogo, how can the youth honor God when they are in the minority and are without the support of friends um, in the church and the church brethren when they are in the classroom? Um, I think you, you were mentioning a few things earlier on, but speak to us some more about that. How can the youth honor God while they are in the classroom when they don't have the support of the pastor and the evangelist and the friends to be there for them? I got it, Sister Perry. <laughs> All right, so um, that's a very good one. Um, so as as a young person, when I was in high school, I was probably the only child in my class who, who was a Christian, who was quote unquote apostolic, right? Um, but the good thing about it was that I had, in the school population, there were those of us and I had the comfort of having friends who were from my assembly. And there were also persons who were from 
you know, other Pentecostal assemblies that were there. But we're not talking now about if you have the, the, the you know, the, the support system to draw from. You're talking now about you being alone and being the only, the only one there. It still goes back to knowing who you are. Um, it still goes back to wanting to please God with your lifestyle, wanting, knowing that and understanding that as a child of God, you, you have now been baptized in the name of Jesus. And Sister Allen made mention, she alluded to it earlier. Um, you, as a, as a young person, and, and I want to be real, <laughs> I don't want to be super fluent. So yes, you're looking over next door and are you looking in, looking around in your classroom and you are seeing persons who are different from you. And even up until today, there are persons who will, I mean, the, their mode of dress is different from, from mine. Their, the way they groom themselves, um, the, the nails are done, the, the, hairs, the hair is done. The eyebrows are done. The all of all of those good stuff. The wearing of pants is not prohibited, and as she said, I am careful, and I'm and I'm just bringing it back now to the young person in a classroom, but I am careful that I do not become a judge, because I have gone, I have I I have seen persons, and you know you're, you're going to, to to certain assemblies, and and it's based on culture as well. Are you seeing persons with blonde, long blonde hair all the way down to the back? And it leaves. It. And so, as I said before, I don't want to be self-righteous. I don't want to reach to a place where, you know, I am looking down on somebody because they do not look the way that I look. The fact of the matter is that we have to now be concerned about where we are and the body with which we fellowship. And so, you, you, yes, as I said before, there are, there, there are two roads, you know, and there are two ways. It's either you're going to go by the way that you that you are being instructed by your spiritual leader, or you're going to deviate and you're going to know um, be succumb to the influences of those that are around you. It still comes back to you ensuring, knowing who you are. Now, one of the things I, I, there was a session at church a couple of years ago could be maybe about two three years ago when i was asked to talk to some of the young persons and of course the issue of you know the wearing of certain apparel pants was brought up um and all of that good stuff and you know i said to them i said to them and i asked them I, the lord just allowed me to go in that line and i said to them i started to ask each of them the school that they go to and of course everybody's school was different not everybody went to the same school no some went to Mount Alvernia, some going to Mobe High, some going to Herbert Morrison, and the uniforms are different. Now, guess what happened? I am going to, I'm, I'm a Herbert Morrison, but guess what? I, I, I didn't like the white uniform because I couldn't wash it, and I'm glad that I didn't go to, to Mount Alvernia. But of course, I liked Mobe High, and Mobe High wears a gray skirt and a gray tunic and a white blouse. But I'm going to Herbert Morrison, so guess what happened? All the love that I love, how the people, all the uniform at um at Mobe High looks. I have to be a, I have to abide by my burgundy and cream uniform, and I must abide by my black shoes and black socks, and I must abide by my or brown shoes and brown socks. The fact of the matter is that, as she said, and 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 it ties in with this as well, is that. When you look around at everybody different, you have to know, ask yourself, who is it that I'm going to please? Am I going to be pleasing God? Am I going to be like, all right, so guess what happened? My mother said I must come in eight o'clock at night and make sure that I don't come in later than eight o'clock. But guess what happened? My, my church sister, who is my best friend, her mother said you can stay out until 10 o'clock. So guess what happened? Mama, yes, they're my Christian too and them can come in 10 o'clock. I don't care what you want to say. I am coming in here at 10 o'clock, not eight o'clock as you are dictating and you start to rebel. Now, guess what happened? 
you are going to be in trouble and you're going to have to face the consequences, even though nothing is wrong with 10 o'clock. But guess what happened? Your house rule said eight o'clock, you must come in, not 10 o'clock. You must abide. And so I, I think one of the things, and as I said before, the world is now in our hand. The, the, the world at large, we have it right in our hand in our smart, on our smartphone. So you pick up the phone and you go on YouTube and you see the person's ad. I'm not going to call nobody name. We're on um, social media. But you look and you see up in North America, people are, and everybody looking at different way from, you have to know, understand who you are. And so it comes back to our small sphere. As in a classroom, you are different. You are you, you still have to abide by the word of God. And there's one thing that I want to say, which is, which I think is of great importance. I remember as a young person growing up and there was a minister at our church. And I remember there was a friend of mine and every now and again, she would, you know, get into scrapes um, with the, well, with the, the rules of the church. And at one point in time, I got so sick. And, you know, I said to, I said to myself, I mean, why is it that every time you have to, and, and then I put on my self-righteous cloak and, you know, begin to become judgmental and condemning. But you know what? And, you know, the minister said to me one day, he called me and he said to me, Denise, you have to understand that not everybody reaches the state of maturity at the same time. Physically, it is so. And so it is spiritually. And so what we have to do is we have to make sure that we become, what's the word I'm looking for? You, you do not become judgmental, but help where you can. Because you might be at a level where, look here, music don't bother me. Or novels don't, but I was a novel girl. I, 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 to, I read a lot. I used to read. And anything that I could put my hand on, I read. And can I tell you something, even as a, when, as a young child, we used to exchange books at school. And I'm talking about the Mills and Boons. I don't know if they still read those anymore. And the Harley Queens and the so forth and so on. And can I tell you, when my parents gone to bed, you know, I sit, I don't turn on it. Well, we never had electric lights. So my lamp was not lit. Of course, that's where I'm coming from. I used to sit down and the light, the street light coming in from the road, I sit down at the window. And it's just a little streak of light. And so each line I was reading, I put up the book so that the light shine on it and I'm reading. Sometimes I fall asleep in the night with my book where I am. And my mother come in there and she find it. And if she see, she tearing it up. She don't care it's whose book it is, who is food for a book. That book is going to be destroyed. And so the, the, the point that I'm making is, so I read novels. But somebody else's issue was probably music or somebody else was whatever. We need not put on our cloaks of self-righteousness because guess what? At the end of the day, you know, my struggles may not be your struggle, neither your struggle, my struggle, but we all are struggling. And so what we need to do is to, even as young people, let us reach out to each other. As I said before, when I was going to high school, I had other members in my school community that were apostolics. And what we did, we banded together. And so what you, as a young person, what I would encourage you to do is to find persons that are of like mind. Yeah? Some of them may not be apostolics, but you know that boy, guess what? They, they have the, the same values that you have. Cling to those persons. The Bible, brother, brother Stewart mentioned it earlier that, you know, evil communication corrupt good manners. So I'm saying to us tonight as young people, yes, you're going to be challenged. Yes, you're going to be, you're going to look different because of the household that you are in. So you can't cream your hair. And you, nothing wrong with that. You can still be beautiful. There are so many natural hairstyles that you can comb and look as good. As, it's not like in those, well, of course, we used to cane you and we used to whatever, whatever. And now you have gel and you can, I, I'm still learning how to do the gel thing. But um, so the hair never used to lie down. It was not as neat and, 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 and soft as it is now because, of course, there are technological advancements. So you can use a shea butter and your castor oil and your this and your that and you, you do your thing. Guess what happened? Not because you can't do what the other person is doing doesn't mean. Let us make ourselves beautiful. Even though beauty is skinny, but you, can, you don't have to be so far apart that you become, you become Sister Dodie. Let me tell you, 
But I can tell you, when we were going to high school, I had a pastor named Bishop Roach. You see? When you're going to school, you make sure that you have on that hat. When you come in oh, yes. from school, you understand? Oh, yes. You don't walk on no road. I don't care where you are coming from, according to the bishop. You make sure that you have on that hat on. And you hear me say hat? You hold, make on, hold, sure on, you hold on, evangelist. Hat on your head. Church, church hat, evangelist? Um, do you still have some, <laughs> what you call, chapel caps? Do you still have some? Yes, man. That is the regime that we were coming from. And can I tell you something? We used to walk together. We used to wear the berries as well. We used to wear berries, go to school. But thank God I'm free. <laughs> I don't mean to offend anybody, but that is where we were. So you don't have it hard as, half as hard as we had it. Because you, if, if pastor see you, and can I tell you, you used to have some police watchmen, you know, as, 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 as big people, they used to watch. One day we went to the beach. One morning we used to go to the beach. Beach was prohibited. You do not go to the beach and come to Bishop Church and sit down on no choir, yeah? So we went to the beach and we saw one of the policemen there. And can I tell you something? Everybody start fret and everybody want run out of the water. And so I had to stop me, I said, hey, stop. All them know that we go to beach. You think them can go to pastor because him is going to ask them how come them see us. And if, him, if they go to him, I am going to tell them, sir, they were at the beach too. Yeah? So, so I, <laughs> you, you have to build up your backbone and you have to preserve yourself. So, and as I said before, young people, you are there. You, you don't have the bondage of wearing a hat to school. I have to wear a beret and stuff like that. But except yourself, nice man. You, you, you don't have to be so far out as we were. You brush the hair and you comb it and you tie it down from overnight and so forth. Or you do the twist and you, you make sure that you look good. So that, because sometimes we put pressure on ourselves, you know. We put pressure on ourselves and we, we think that boy, as a child of God, you can't, you mustn't, you can fix up. You, you don't have to go all out, but at the same time, within the confines of what you are allowed. You can, you can. And I think I talk a lot. The Lord bless you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Evangelist. But you, so, see, so, and, you know, and, and let me tell you, I am passionate about it because I know how it felt as a young girl growing up into, in, in such a society. It, it was not the easiest of times. And I'm sure, as I said before, these young people have their challenges as well. But you have to make sure that, you know, first, you have to be confident in who you are. You must know who you are and you must know who you are through the eyes of God. And sometimes you have to stop listening. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you an experience? I, ex, one of the experiences I had, I remember as a young girl growing in church, when, when we, I mean, I was always a worshiper. And so, I, and, and for those of you who know me, I walk a particular way. It is nothing that I have, it, it's, it, that is just how I am. It is just me. And you know, one day I, came home and my mother called me and she said to me, she didn't tell me who it was. She said, sister, so I also say, on every minute in the church, I don't know that puts and in the ear. And as a matter of fact, the way all you walk, you're just too proud. And I look at her and I say, I said, mama, you know what I've come to realize is that some of these people were not happy when they were young. They weren't happy when they were young. So guess what happened? They do not like to see young people being jovial. And so you can laugh, young people. You can laugh. You can have fun and you can have clean fun. You just have to create that atmosphere to make sure. I mean, as young people, can I tell you, I, there was not a church trip that I did not go on. And the last time I counted when I was a young person, I could remember going to about 37 different churches. One day we just sat down and we started writing the, the, the assemblies that we visited. Youth we convocation. We have to concern ourselves with the things of God. God bless you. All right. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, Evangelist. Um, so, so much to learn there. 
So even when we're in the minority, we have to learn to be confident in who we are in Christ. Um, Ella spoke earlier on about our personal conviction to survive being in the minority. You have to have a personal conviction and be confident um, in who you are. Um, I understand that Evangelist Nepal is on, so I just want to greet you, Evangelist, and probably Bishop is with you. Greetings to you. Praise God. We're happy to have you on as you are, as usual, always supporting us. Praise God. I guess we'll hear from you. Yes, um, Lord. That's yeah, Lord I'm, I'm enjoying and endorsing everything that my friend just spoke about. I would say just the same way. Praise but God, I think as um, young people growing up in church, I was young too. I was carried to church in my mother's womb and I never missed a beat. So I know all the stages and I was able to navigate myself around so that I was seen as a beauty, even by the unsaved and I did not look like them. And I would say to young people, don't carry yourself just like somebody who is regrettably apostolic. Be proud and it should come out in your dress. It should come out in your speech. It should come out in everything about you. You should be respected and loved. You should be one of the best dressed people in your community, in your school. And you can still have the church rules and obey them and still look beautiful. I am 100% for that. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Evangelist. Amen. Just so in words, just stand into what Evangelist Fogo spoke just now. So, Elder Stewart, I want to just throw this one in the mix because it okay. is somewhat linked to what we just discussed. So someone is asking, can someone really love God, but they are just unruly? Um, they, they, they just have a thing about sticking to rules. So in their hearts, they love God, but you know, they, they find it difficult to follow the rules. Well, it's a possibility that how they were socialized could contribute greatly to them not being able to or not wanting to follow rules per se. So patience has to be exercised with somebody like that. Can't bomb rush them. Can't be on them and like, it would be disobedient and you don't love God because obviously the first thing that would be said if a person is not in accordance with the rules and the principles that the person could not love God and the person is just and unruly and maybe got even terms maybe used like Lego beast or some other derogative term. So the person may be struggling with trying to get that aspect of their life together. So patience should be exercised as you walk them through the process to make them understand that yes, why they are your own person, but you are within a community that asks for conformity to certain things. So we would prefer if you would you know line up with it and so on so as not to be um seen as either being disobedient or unruly or not wanting to conform but rather walk them through the process so in that particular case patience should be exercised and sometimes the persons who are making statements and the person does not love god they have issues that they are struggling personally as well but it may not come out in a physical light or in the public but certainly they are struggling with stuff as well and they want to give the impression that they're all of that and a bag of chips and god knows and i know and you know it's not really so so all of us are at different places different stages and we have different things that may cause us to stumble a bit so for me that person needs to be guided and just allow patience to let the person come through and try not to be judgmental or to be you know acting as if well i i don't understand and like i said i like what i'm even this folk did because like her growing up in church and you know persons would say well these young people and you know they would make statements that would suggest that they didn't really understand where you were and especially as a, as a teenager and going through puberty you're trying to find yourself trying to understand where you are sometimes things will take a while for you to get the handle of it so you should not be too quick to pass judgment, but rather allow patience to 
allow the person to come through. They'll get through in time. It might take a little bit longer than somebody else because you might be at a one stage. I may not be there yet, but I'm getting there. So pray for me until I get there. That's what should be done. Okay, thank you very much, um, Elder. Yes. Praise God. So to Sister Allen, when one hears the phrase honoring God, it sort of paints a picture of no sin. But in the youthful stage of someone's life, it is typically the time when someone is trying to find himself or herself and may want to experience various things. So several questions from this. I'll just ask this first one, Sister Allen. What advice would you offer the youth in navigating this period as far as honoring God is concerned? Okay. As you said, sometimes persons are, the, the picture will be painted as honoring God means you are perfect or you are sinless, but that's not true. Uh, honoring God with our lifestyle, as I said, lifestyle is, it's our everyday walk. And as we walk with the Lord, we will make mistakes. And young people need to know that we all make mistakes. However, for me, I would say there are two basic ways of learning some stuff. You learn from your own mistakes and you need to learn from somebody else's mistake, right? And being an adult sense is not an easy thing. When my sister was talking, I really wanted to interject in what I just didn't. When they spoke about the minority, I can't speak to that because, and I'm going to get, get into what you asked. Being in a minority, yes, you'll feel a way. I am going to tell you, you will feel a way. That's a fact. I felt a way, but guess what? I had to line up myself and say, what does the word of God say about me? I have to know my worth because I remember going to college. Now, being in Trelawney, in Falmouth with your brethren. When you're with your brethren, you're strong, man. You feel good, everything nice. Yes, man. You're shining, you're going on. But let me tell you something. The true test of your walk with God is when you're not with your brethren. And when it was time for me to go to college, I went to Kingston. Now, I am in Kingston away from my parents, from the church family. Not one person from my church was at college. And when I went there, I mean, I mean, everything was there. Everything was there. It's an all-girl institution. And let me tell you something, especially when the Myconians come over. Come on, I'm a girl. And when they come, they will say, man, 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 in the place, everybody excited. Yes, come on. And persons are tempted and they will do their thing and all of that. And I remember when you had some girls who they got dressed up and put on them fancy thing and they were heading out to halfway tree to go enjoy themselves. And I remember they said to me, Glenn, are not coming. Trust me, it never easy to say I'm not going because everybody on that wall, um, I would say on the dorm, all of them went. I was the only one left. And that you call minority. And let me tell you something, it was a lonely feeling. You know what I had to do in that time? That time was cassette. <laughs> I had to play the music, and when the, 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 the cassette wind up, I use the pencil and put it in there and wheel it around again, you see, and I played that up asleep. And when oh, the first yeah. come in <laughs> and start to share what and what them do, as a young lady, you feel a little way, but guess what? I held on to my integrity, yeah? Of course you feel away. Young people, you're going to feel away. Anybody say, well, I'm telling you, you will feel away, but trust me, if you know who you are in God, you're all on to integrity, your morals, your values you stand for, you will make it. And I stood my ground. And let me tell you something, when Facebook came about, I didn't even know about Facebook. I was going to university at the time, and a young lady I didn't see for years, she said, Glennis, you never hear about Facebook? And I said, no. She said, go on Facebook, man, you link up to, to some girls who went to college, you know, much years ago. And I, that's how I joined Facebook. And when I joined Facebook, you see all of my friends that I had from college days, you know what the question all of them asked me still? Glennis, you still a Christian? Oh my God, me proud of you. Are you married? And I mean, the excitement. And they said they respected me for that. Let me tell you something. Being in a minority is not easy, but guess what? 
you stand out and as it sounds like dare to be different dare to be a daniel dare to stand alone don't let that worry you yes you'll feel away i'm not going to say that i feel away but if you know what you stand for all on to integrity know what you all about and this period is not an easy one as i said before because during this stage you have so many influences i mean all around person selling you this person selling you that and you feel like a waste of what you want to get involved but i'm telling young people you have to know what you want and i knew what i wanted i'm telling you i knew what i wanted. it was not easy and i may i'm saying to you young people make a make a decision for yourself say i have a goal that i want to reach in life and i don't want anybody to prevent me from reaching that goal that is both temporal and spiritual have something written out for me i i'm a writer and my virgin know that i love to write i have a lot of notes i write down stuff write down where you see yourself five years from now where you want to go in god and what you want to do and the plans trust me when i write them down it's very important you revisit them because i can tell you i made a list my brother and i i can i'm able to tick off most of those things that i have achieved not because i am perfect because there is no perfection in us no god will perfect us and we are striving towards perfection but let me tell us some young people sometimes you are too hard on yourself and i don't know if it is our fault you are too hard on yourself you will make mistakes but guess what don't stay in that condition get up get up brush off yourself ask for forgiveness and get back on the road again and it is also important to have somebody you can talk to don't follow anybody and say that there's nobody to trust and there's nobody uh -uh. if you can't find anybody that means something is wrong with you because guess what we all need each other and we serve an intelligent god if we never need each other it would only make one person on the earth but since he make all of us it means that we need each other so young people it's not easy to navigate through this time but with god i am telling you you will make it thank you very much sister allen lovely well, amen so yes it, it, you know the thing is that we want the young people to understand that you know we have to be frank we, yes. as apostolics we are going to be in the minority anywhere you go outside of church you are going to be in the minority so you have to have that made up mind to say you're going to hold on um when you go to the universities and the colleges as sister allen was just mentioning you know you're going to find yourself in these situations but as she's the evidence here and we have a lot of evidences all about you can make it and, and let me say, my brother, if you remember all the patriots of old, all the men mm -hmm. that we are reading about in the Bible, they all made mistakes. They yes. all made a mistake. But guess what? Don't stay in that rut. Get back yeah. up again. Yes? Yeah, man. Just remember that. Yeah, lovely. Because sometimes I find persons giving up after one mistake. Right. You know, um, but don't give up, young people. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Allen. Um, so I would also want to hear Sister Fogo's take on this whole matter. You know, perfection being expected of the youth, but we know the challenges during this, the, 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 the period of their life when they're going through, heading on to maturity. Um, how can they navigate this period, Evangelist Fogo? Good All right, so... Um... <laughs> youth you know what there's a scripture that says that the lord winks at our ignorance he does and there's one thing that i want us our young people to understand as well is that you know what god is really concerned about our hearts he is concerned about our hearts i want to bring us back to our minds to and I've always, David, the story of David and Uriah's wife um, has always been an inspiration to me. And, you know, when you look at, when you look at, and, 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 and there's this comparison between himself and Saul. No, David, from a, from a human perspective, what... Saul did paled in comparison 
to the exploits of David in the matter of Uriah and Uriah's wife. The man was conniving. He was deceitful. He was wicked. And we, can, and, and we have all the adjectives that can describe David and what he did to Uriah. Um, so young people, I don't know, I, I hope all of us know this story. So there was this man who, David, lived near to Uriah. Uriah was one of his generals. It was a time when Israel were, were at battle and it was a time when kings went to war. So it was expected that David should have been at war. No, he wasn't. Uriah, his general was out at war and the, the scripture tells us that David went onto the roof of his house, looked over into Uriah's yard, saw Uriah's wife washing herself. She was beautiful to look at, sent, him, sent, that, sent to call her and he, she, she came, he had sex with her, she became pregnant. And when it was told David that Uriah's wife was pregnant, he sent and called Uriah. When called Uriah from the battle, when Uriah came, um, David said to him, you know, go down, man, and you know, be with your wife. She needs company. And the man of God looked at him and said, How can I do that? My men are at battle. I, you know, it, I just cannot. And so he did not go into his wife. No. David went back and he said, all right, come, come, come where I am. And they had a feast and David made the man drunk. And even in his drunken stupor, he sent him back to his house. You know where the man slept? The man slept at his doorway. The man had such integrity that not while his men were out there in the field endangering their lives, would he go in and have pleasure with his wife? He did not. And so when David recognized that he could not, and we know the term to that, that he could not pass the jacket off on the man. The Bible says that he wrote a letter and gave it to Uriah. And he said, when you go back to battle, give it to your supervisor. He gave it to Job. He did not even open the letter to see what was in there. That was how much the man trusted his leader. He went in, he gave Job the, the, um, the letter, the letter read, have Uriah go to the hottest part of the battle and have all the men retreat from him. What do you think was gonna happen? He was ensuring that the man was killed. It's just like today when, you know, a, a, a man have a hit job and him go and him shoot the man and the man drop. And before him walk away, and, the man survived. He make sure that him pump some more bullets in there. Pretty much that was what David did to Uriah. No. And we know after, after that, the child was born. Um, the child died. The prophet was sent to him. And the prophet spoke to him in a, in a parable. You have one a man in a city had, he had a pastor full of sheep. There was this man with his one yo lamb. And, you know, Instead of the, 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 the taking one, the wayfaring man came, instead of him taking one of his own sheep from his pastor, he went and took the man's one lamb. And when David heard it, heard it, his spirit was ignited in him. And I think the two most, a couple, a couple of the most powerful words was when Nathan said to him, thou art the man. And he recognized then that what he did was known to God. Saul, on the other hand, went to battle. God said to him, slay all the Amalekites, completely destroy them. Saul did not obey God's command. What he did, he saved the fattest of the lambs and whatever. And when the prophet went down to him and he said, Samuel went to him and said, look here. Is what that I hear. Did you slay utterly? And he said, yes, man, I did. And he said, so the prophet said, so what meaneth then the bleating of the, 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 the sheep and the loin of the oxen? And he said, oh, 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 that, that? Oh, no, man, um, I saved them to make sacrifice. <laughs> and making a sacrifice was a good thing, he thought. 
And the word of the Lord says, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearten than the fat of rams. And when you look at those two acts, one was more erroneous than the other, but God rejected Saul and David had another chance. And I don't know where I'm going there, sir. But I'm saying to us tonight that God looks at the heart. God looks at our heart. And so sometimes it's, you know, we have to be careful the things that we do. And even in obeying the rules of the church, yes, you wear the hat, you make sure that the hair is not permed, the, the, the sleeves of the dress are the right length, um, you make sure that, you know, the, the, the dress is below the knee, you make sure, but there was a man in scripture, the Bible says, Amaziah did all that was right, but not with a perfect heart. We can obey all the rules. And I'm not saying to us tonight that the obeying of the rules is not important. They are. But I want us to understand, young people, that God looks at our heart first and foremost. So, yes, you must obey the rules. But in doing so, you must play. What is your motive? What is your motive behind you being obedient? Is it because you want the pastor to see you? Or you want the bishop to, um, to lift you up to and, and to... You want to be an evangelist, an evangelist is a good thing. I can get to go up there and preach and sing, and I can go out there. And if I go out to preach, I'm going to get an offering. I have to be an evangelist because I'm, I have to tell him how it go. And I'm really, do you really want to please God? And so that is what God looks at tonight. And so I want to say to our young people that at the end of the day, when God looks at us, looks at us is our walking according to his will or is it because we want to can i tell you something there are those of us who walk unto ourselves you know and there are those of us who dress unto ourselves and we live unto ourselves some of us we want to have the praise of men and so guess what happened we we, we look nice outside we are beautiful we we, we are the epitome of of grace and, and, and sanctification and, and we, 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 pers we, we are the personification of what a true Christian ought to look like. But when I look at Sister Lai, I hate that girl. And I mean, we call the people of God derogatory names. We don't talk out loud, but it is in our heart. And so we must ensure that in all that we do, in all our pleasing, in all our walking, it is to give glory to God. Israel was concerned about an outward appearance. They were concerned about giving tithes of kitchen herbs and all of that. They were concerned about not killing. They were concerned about not stealing. But when Jesus came, Jesus said to them, listen to me. If you look at you, if you call your brother a fool, you are in jeopardy of hell's fire. If you hate your brother, you may not take up a stone or take up a gun and shoot him and kill him, but you commit murder in your heart. If you look, you, you may not go into bed and lie down with somebody and, 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 and have sexual intercourse. But guess what happened? You sit down and you look at, it. boy, brother Kevin look good. And boy, him handsome. I wonder, and you start to go into all the, the gory and intimate details. God looks at you as being a fornicator or an adulterer. So you may not go out there and have and, and do the thing literally. But as I said before, we have to be concerned about what is it that is in our heart. So when the Lord looks down at us, is our uh, the, the words of and and the, and the psalmist says it so beautifully, let the words of my mouth because we can speak, you know, but the meditation, everything has to be balanced, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Evangelist Fogo. Uh, we are kind of in a little situation because it's now after nine. Um, still have quite a bit more questions. Um, and I know that the persons who are listening in are really enjoying, you know, the, 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 the thoughts and the points being shared by our panelists. Um, what I'll do, I'll just have, I'll just ask one more question um, and we'll just wrap up concerning this same um, topic that we're on. And um, we will see where we go from there. But ju just to ask one final question, 
even though we have a number of other things that um, persons, I know that persons would be interested in knowing, but I just ask Elder Stewart just to share, just in brief, um, on this question. So it's in relation to what we spoke of just now. So we're just looking on how the youth can navigate the, the, the period of their lives when they are exploring and when they want to learn who they are, when they want to find themselves and you know the, all the struggles that come with that period. But the question I'd like to direct to you, Elder, is yes. how would you advise the more mature brethren to help guide the youth through this transition period in their lives? Okay. Very good question. And I think the first thing that needs to happen that day, mature budget should be of a confidential and trustworthy nature that the person, younger persons will want to come to them. One of the arguments I have heard, and again, because I grew up in church and the persons kept on saying it, that they can't find anybody who's trustworthy and confidential. If you tell certain people your business, you go go out of the world place. And so they were very uncomfortable in sharing with old, some of the older persons, you know, that they were going through situations. So there also needs to be a, an attitude of understanding and not being judgmental. And sad to say, but it is true that sometimes the older we get is the more likely you are to be judgmental. And sometimes people even seem to forget that when they were younger, they did some of the same things that they are now knocking the persons for doing. And that they are compromising, certainly, but please, spare a thought. You were there at a particular age, you were doing certain things. So tell them, hello, I understand and what it feels like. Sister Joy said it earlier that um, you learn two ways, either from your own experience or from somebody else's experience. I think, as has been said, the wise man learns from his experience, but the wiser one learns from somebody else's own. In a case like that, you want to pass on to them, I know what it feels like, I have been there, I can help you to navigate through this period because it's not an easy period. I understand that you're going to feel the pressure. You're going to have days when you don't want to be bothered, keeping it real. There are days when you don't feel like coming to church, especially if certain things happen to you and you don't feel like come, come back to the house of God because you feel like everybody is against you. And if a church is, especially a small assembly where everybody up, up in your business and you feel so out of it, patience and understanding must be extended to the individuals. You're not compromising with sin and wrong. You are not making it look as if they have a pass or a license to do wrong, but certainly you're going to be extending understanding and patience through the situation while they find their feet. So it's very important that the older ones be confidential, like I said before, and able to navigate them through. And sometimes some younger persons don't want to even talk to older persons much more to even consider telling them what they have been through. No, because the first argument is, you're not going to understand what we got through. You're not, going, you're not going to act real to my situation. And I want somebody who will at least act like they understand how I feel. And like I said, I was saying this um, even, like I said this last night, and I'm going to repeat it. I grew up in church, and as a teenager, I heard the preachers preach. And I began to wonder if something's wrong with me, because as God live it. All I hear the preacher giving an impression that he had it all together. And I'm wondering, I must, he must have some Holy Ghost for me to have because certainly I'm looking at the girls and them look good. I'm going to want to have sex with them. I'm going to want to do certain things that other persons are doing. And I'm saying is, what is it that they have that, they, that I don't have because certainly something must be seriously wrong with my walk with God. And then I grew up. And like I always tell the folks that, Perhaps it's my fault because if I had stayed younger, maybe I'm naive, then maybe I wouldn't have, um, you know, known that truth be told, the, the older persons had their struggles as well. So the reality is that 
even having grown older, my, 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 my um, preacher, preacher friend said it. He says when he got to a certain age, he thought that certain things would have left him, but they are still there. And he said, it's not, it's not like it's going anywhere. So the reality is that you're going to have to navigate. Tell them, listen, man, I feel what you feel, but I'm holding straight by the grace of God. Don't give the impression that you don't understand, especially if you grew up in church as well. As I personally, I have to keep it real because I grew up in church. I know the struggles. I understand going to high school and I went to all boys high school. Can you imagine? <laughs> my God. When I talk about coming in on a Monday morning and all the boys start telling you what they did over the weekend and you as a church boy, the only apostle um, in the class, have to keep quiet because you can't talk because... If you even talk, I like you going to tell because you know that what they did, you didn't do. So if you even say something, I like you going to tell. So being more mature should help to help them to navigate by telling them, hello, I understand how you feel. I know what it feels like, but you can be overcome an overcomer. You can be successful, but keep it real. Let them want to come to you. Let them want to be um, able to tell you their experiences and you know jump on them same time and tear them up and say but you're not christian you never save because certainly if certain persons hear you express certain things the first thing they say is you know you know save because you couldn't know jesus and do what you do but they did some things back in the day and they still believe that they were saved as well so you want to ensure you tell them brother i was just as saved but i had my struggles but i am better now for it because of the experiences I've taught me. So I am learning to be able to share with you and I'm not going to act like I don't understand. All other folks must act like they understand what young persons go through and be able to relate to their struggles and tell them real thing, big man thing as a man, as a sister, big man thing, hello, me understand what you say. Me understand because I've been there, done that myself and the grace of God that held me together. And can I be honest, can I be honest? There were days when I wanted to do some stuff and I, I let myself go and say, I'm going to do this. How I, how I didn't do it, how I came out, it must be God that kept me up. Because certainly in my mind, in my spirit, in my body, I, I was up for it. I mean, I was like, yes, I'm done. I was like, probably like BLM. Yes, man. Um, I was like, hello, I'm going to do this. So at the end of the day, we have to be real. Let the young people know we're not condoning sin, we're not condoning wrong, but at the same time, we understand and we are here to help you. Let them want to come to you. Let them want to talk to you. Let them be your friends. I used to, as a younger man, have older persons as my friends, and they helped to shape me and mold me. Many young persons perhaps may not want to talk to older folks because they said they're not going to be real and they won't understand them. And believe me, if you want to get me upset in church, is to get up and start talking, say, nobody now gonna understand what I got through. We say, what? You don't know my story. And you look, you look at persons, and sometimes you make a judgment call as to what you think. Because they look the part now, you want to make the assumption that they have not been through anything. Please, back up. That's not the reality. Some of us have been through some real stuff. But God held us together. So please, older folks need to tell the people, even if you're not going to go into detail and tell them what you have done, but tell them, I understand how you feel. I was there myself if I grew up in church. Or, or if you even grew up in church, at least you were there in your experiences. And I can help you because I understand struggle and I understand your feelings. Sorry, uh, Minister. Yes, yes ma'am. I, I, I just want to say to Brother Ransford, I don't know who he's, he's referring to as the older persons. <laughs> but I want him to understand that that's the category that he is in now. So just just for clarification, if you think, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Mr. <Ms>. Fugo. <laughs> thank you very much. I, I forget sometimes I make it in the, <laughs> the past. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you for for that, Elder. Amen. Wonderful. <laughs> um, really enjoyed having all three of you on. Sister Allen, Evangelist Fogo, Elder Stewart, you know, wonderful words of encouragement, of advice. Praise God. Um, and we really enjoyed the session. 
the thing is that there are so many more questions that are here. Persons are asking questions. Um, and I just feel a way that I can't get to, you know, continue and to ask these questions so persons can get some answers. Uh, but time is upon us. So we have to end it here. What I'll do just now is just to ask each panelist to give a final word. I'm gonna start with Evangelist Fogo, then go to Sister Allen. I'll ask Elder Stewart to just give his final remarks and to pray, close in prayer. So not too long, just about a minute or two. Evangelist Fogo. Thank you, sir. Um, I just want to say to our young people that, you know, sometimes we hear some phraseologies and, you know, we're thinking that, boy, I, you hear perfection and you hear, um, you know, honoring God. And, and so sometimes, and sometimes we think that, you know, this is something, this is something that I am not able to attain to. But I'm saying to you, the word of the Lord says about um, the prophet, I think Elijah, he says he was a man of like passions. And what passions mean, he had the same inclinations, the same tendencies. He was a man of like passions like we are, but he prayed to God that it not rain and it did not. And he prayed again and it rained. I am just saying to us that we are, there, none of us perfect. The only perfect person that came here was Jesus Christ. He was the only sinless one. All of us, it doesn't matter what the bishop looked like. It don't matter what kind of robe him wear. He was there. He had some tendencies that were not good as well. We have had our issues. As young people, we were not perfect. I wasn't certainly, but I have overcome. And I'm saying to you that the same God that has brought me here, that has brought us here, he is the same God that is able to keep you. So be encouraged tonight. All is not lost. You can make it. You can overcome. You can cross this hurdle and you will get to the end of the finish line. God bless you. You can go ahead, Sister Allen. Okay. Uh, what I, my final word to all the young people that are online tonight, I would say to them that the truth is, as children of God, just remember it is a daily walk. It's a daily walk. Don't, don't forget that it is a daily walk with God. And as was mentioned before about the mature brethren, I would encourage you to find someone who is a model to you, someone you can look up to. Because growing up, I had role models, not just my parents, but I had persons in the church who I look up to, they were approachable and all of that. And I would say to those of us who are mature, I pray that we are approachable so the young people can feel comfortable to come to us and to share things that are on their heart tonight. It's sad to know that um, they have questions that we can address them, but I'm just saying that don't stay in your corner and die and say, well, there's nobody cares because somebody cares. So I'm just saying to you, find somebody who is mature in the gospel, who, who knows, because that is why we have to be real, share our struggles, the pain, the things that we have been through, and let them understand that, look here, this is what I am facing, please help me, because you know, you really want to make it in. And for us as children of God, I pray that we will be that person. Let us be that person that somebody can come to, to know Christ. That's my last thing tonight. Sorry. Yes, well, this Fogo, thank you very much for the correction. I, I sometimes seem to forget that we, we are there. As um, somebody said, we are the oldest of the, the youngest of the old people. So we're right there. Um, as has been said by both um, presenters, and I just want to endorse it. With God, you can make it. And we will tell you that. Growing up in church was not the easiest thing in the world. Challenged every single side, but we stood because we had help from older persons. We had peers who were sober and conscious, and so we stayed. You want to surround yourself with people who will help you 
to stand as well. Don't just be friends, so to speak, with anybody. Find people who will help to mold and to shape you. And if you do wrong, I remember I grew up with three other brothers. Believe me, if you do wrong, they're telling you the foolishness because they're not afraid to tell you, say, boss, you're the rubbish a while ago. They were not afraid to tell you that. So you want to have people in your space. Even if you are, they are your peers, they can tell you this is not right. The word of God says you shouldn't do this. So please, let's be real. And with God, you're going to make it. We, we, we just want to make sure that we keep the focus and do what God has called us to do because certainly it is very much achievable. We're going to pray at this time. Kavan? Yes, sir, you can go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the many mercies you've extended to us, Lord. So very grateful for this platform. Lord, not known to us before, but certainly, Lord, in your wise providence and knowledge, you would have known, Lord, that would have been gathered on this platform on tonight to share. We thank you, Lord, for every person, Lord, who is on this platform tonight, and even those who are on Facebook, Lord, watching. We thank you, Lord, we're able to share in your word and our own experiences, mighty God, so that somebody can be helped. Lord, there are so many persons who are struggling right now, younger persons, Lord, and they feel like they're all by themselves. Many of them feel so despondent, Many of the Lord God have don't even know why they still go to church because in their minds they feel like they're the worst failures in the world. Help them to understand, Lord, that failure is not final. And Lord, even if they have gone wrong, Lord, they can recover, they can repent, they can turn, and they can come back to you. Many, Lord, of them are struggling with their minds, Lord God, in their hearts, in their spirits, Lord. They don't know what to do. They can, oh God, Say they can't find anybody to talk to because nobody's confidential. But Lord, I'm praying right now that you just help them to God, come to a place of understanding that Lord, there are people who are available, who are willing to help them, God, to understand that the struggles that they're going through, they are not the only ones who go through the struggles, but God, with you, hallelujah, they can find strength, they can find grace to help in time of need. Strengthen every single person, God Almighty, who has chimed in this tonight, Lord. May you give them grace, may you give them courage, mighty God. Strengthen our young people, oh God Almighty, as they face their challenges, Lord. We know they're not easy, Lord, and we not for one second, Lord, pretend that they are easy, but we believe God, yet the same God who helped Daniel and his friends God, in a strange land in Babylon to stand up, Lord, and to be different. You're the same God tonight who will help us, Lord God, when those three men were thrown into the fire because they stood up for you. Oh God, we believe and are assured in our spirits that you are the same God who's able to help and to succor those who come to you in faith. And so we come to you in faith right now, Lord, as you're going to help us. We thank you, Lord God, for Evan Fogel and for Sister Glennis Allen, Lord God, for the National Youth Department and for all those, Lord God, who have put this together. Bless them, Lord God, strengthen them, give them a greater resolve. Help them to hold, Lord God, onto your unchanging hand. And may they always find grace and strength, mighty God. We are going to be challenged. We are going to be tempted, Lord, but help us to hold it together and to find grace and strength in you. Bless us now in a very special way. May your hand of protection and blessing be upon us, Lord, for good. Keep our hearts and minds abiding and trusting in you. May we always, Lord God, look to you as our source of strength, our source of comfort, our source of help. Help us, Lord God, not to be self-sufficient or to think, Lord, that we have no help in here. But, God, we can seek help, Lord God, from you or from someone, Lord, who we have placed into our lives. Bless now, I pray, and sanctify us unto victory. Grant us grace. Grant us strength. We commit and recommend every single person right now into your hands. We look to you, Lord, and we tell you thanks in advance for your blessings. We call it done in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise amen, God. amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So let me thank again Sister Allen, Evangelist Fogel, Elder Stewart. Praise God. Awesome night. Amen. We just want to thank you for availing yourselves, you know, to come and just to share with us openly, frankly. Amen. And by so doing, you have indeed left a blessing. 
praise God upon us. You have left a mark upon us and we really want to appreciate um, God and thank God for you all. Praise God. I'm going to be just, we're just going to be having the benediction and probably our missionary or president will come in just to bid us farewell. So just raise your right hand where you are for the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise, Praise, God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We, we give thanks to Sister Allen, Sister Fogo, Elder Ren. Praise God. We thank you all for coming. Indeed, it has been a great night. The three of you, I don't know, God really picked you out for tonight. And I don't know how many of you were looking in the chat room, but everybody is begging for a part two. We're not sure. <laughs> we're not sure about that, but stay tuned and let us see what happens. But um, we really learned a lot tonight, and this is what we really need. Realness, you know, really need to hear the experiences so that persons can know where we're coming from and how we got here. Sister Fogo, I tell you, you <laughs> God bless you. God bless you, Sister Allen, so much. God bless you, Elder Ren. And we pray that, you know, for everyone that view. Thank you for coming. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for saying. Thank you for supporting. And thank you for listening. And we pray that the Lord will bless you and that you'll take all that you heard tonight <coughs> and that it will help you to be a better person to help those young persons as well and also for the young people that this session would have been an encouragement to you that hey you can make it if you fall get up brush off yourself and continue because if we made it surely you can and god is not willing that anyone should perish but all of us to make it into heaven and we want everybody to be saved so i pray that you know god will continue to bless everyone and uh, See you next week. Stay tuned to hear what will happen. We're not sure as yet, but stay tuned. God bless you. Thank you, Elder.